Lord of all. Say thank you again, O oh God. It's a blessing us to be in this place. Thank you, Lord, that you are wonderful in our lives. You've been awesome in our lives, O oh God. We owe you the honor. We owe you the glory, O oh God. We owe you the praise. Because you, you deserve it all. Now, even now, Lord of oh God, we pray that you will bless us even in our preaching of the word of oh God. God, you be glorified. Let the people of God, let the hearers of your word of oh God be edified and be blessed. God, hold us up. Dear God, guide our tongue, guide our thoughts, O oh God. God, we pray that all is said and done will be pleasing in your sight. Once again, God, we give you honor, we give you glory. Now may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in our sight. Thank you for being our strength. Thank you for being our redeemer. It's in the awesome name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Amen. He is truly worthy of the praise. A little more volume, if you would please. Feel myself to leave me in too close. Amen. He is worthy of the play. We're grateful that you have joined us on this day. Amen. This truly is a day that the Lord has made. And we should rejoice and be glad in it. So matter, no matter where you are, whether you're here present, whether you're viewing virtually, we want to say thank you, Jesus. Amen. For blessing us with another, another opportunity just to lift up his name. Amen. He is truly worthy. I want to bother you um, from a few verses in the book of Acts. The third chapter. In the book of Acts, third chapter. I'll begin at verse 1 and I'll read through verse 8. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. And it reads as such. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look unto us, or look at us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up, and he leaping up stood and walked, and entering with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. I want to talk to you this morning uh, briefly yes. of a subject of stand up and walk. Yes. Stand up and walk. There are a lot of people in the world and even in the, the body of Christ, in the church, who struggle with a mentality of sitting by the wayside, begging on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sitting by some gate, some doorway, some spot, some place, begging on. Mm -hmm. Looking for a way to survive daily. Mm -hmm. Looking for a way to survive daily. Looking for a way to survive daily. Even just to make it to the, the next day. Very rarely do they look at themselves and, and, and realize that they need a position change. They could use a position change. But oftentimes they don't want a position change. Sometimes being in a condition for so long, you get comfortable in that position, even if the position is uncomfortable. 
Sometimes we are in a position for so long, we've gotten comfortable in that position, even though the position is uncomfortable. And if we're able to take an honest evaluation of ourselves, yeah, if we're able to take an honest evaluation of ourselves, amen, we find out that we settle for an easier option. Let me say it again. We settle for an easier option. And we have taken the path of least or less resistance. Mm. In other words, I'm comfortable with, with right where I'm at. I'm going to leave it there. Even though it's not really where I want to be, I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to stay right there. Mm -hmm. So so this morning, as, as we came in, most of us, or some of us noticed, there was a particular vehicle that was parked a certain way that crossed over two parking spots. And and when we and when we addressed it with the individual, the individual just laughed and said that they were going to leave it right there. <laughs> Realizing that it was creating problems, they were going to leave their vehicle positioned exactly where it was. No matter how it affected anybody else, they were going to leave it as it was. Right. And so I simply mentioned that individual that if you hear the word Position in the message today. Just go ahead and shout out. Stay right there. <laughs> but I'm not gonna tell y'all who it was. <laughs> Stay right there, <laughs> hey Amen. And so, oftentimes, we take a path of, of least resistance. We want it to be easy, so I, it's convenient for me, even though it's uncomfortable. Right. It's convenient right now for me to become comfortable in an uncomfortable position because I don't necessarily know anything else. I may not necessarily know anything else. I know it's uncomfortable for me to be in this position, but I don't know anything different because of my circumstances. Ride with me for just a little while longer. Yeah. The truth is, it really is sometimes all that we know. And sometimes when we want it to change, or we think we want to change, what we do is oftentimes we, we solicit God for a miracle. But oftentimes we solicit God for the wrong miracle. In, in other words, for our life, we, we need something so we can continue to make it day by day. So we solicit God for a miracle, but oftentimes it's the wrong miracle. In other words, sometimes we solicit God for the for the the money instead of soliciting God for the miracle to have the ability to make the money. We take the path that's easier. The one that creates less resistance. Even though I'm uncomfortable in my position, I may not necessarily know how to do something different to reposition myself. So I solicit God to help me. And my prayer is, help me to make it day by day by sending me alms. Instead of God fixing so that I'm able to go and create and make my own alms. Well, well let, me, let me move on. This, this man, the Bible says, was, was taken to the temple daily. He was in this condition by no choice of his. He was in this condition it says he was born this way from his mother's womb. He was taken to the temple every day. Taken to the same place every day. Amen. And, and in his mind, he had settled on the benefits of being crippled. I know it didn't look like there were any benefits of being crippled, but this man had settled on the benefits of being crippled by being taken to the temple every day and placed in the same spot every day. He was accustomed to begging. Yeah. Mm. He was accustomed to asking for arms. He was he was custom to, to seek out silver and gold. Yeah. yeah. He had his he had his pitch down pat. Yeah, he knew exactly what to say. Yeah, as he saw all the people traveling back and forth in and out of the temple. Yeah. I imagine he had a nice sized cup. Yeah. So that he could get as many arms inside the cup. As he as he possibly could. Mm. Yeah, th th this man was was there not not because of any circumstance that he created, but yet he was still taking advantage of the fact that he was crippled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not everyone in in the position 
is there because they're lazy. Right. Right. Some are in a position because of circumstances that they, they could not control, that they had no control over, that a circumstance that, they, that could not have been avoided for them. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that because you had no control over the position you're in, that you have to remain in that position. Uh oh. Yeah. Sometimes your position can change, but but it, it changes only when we receive something not from the outside, but something on the inside that that can trigger, that can stir, that can spur us to to do something different, something that moves and shakes our spirit on the inside. Now, this can happen quickly, or this can happen over a process of time. But, but we need something to happen in order to, to get us to shift and change the way we think in order to change our position. Mm -hmm. Now, some people take advantage of, of their skill. Let, 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 me, let me tell you. Some people take advantage of their skill, um, and they use the skill to manipulate others, to support them, mm -hmm. so that they can make it day by day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let, let, let me let me say it like this: a good, a good, a good talker can can sell you things, mm -hmm. even when you don't need it. <laughs> and one who has the skill to be able to speak and 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 persuade and convince others to do for them uh, could very well be one who is manipulating other people through their skill. Uh, I know someone uh, who who was very good at speaking. You you wouldn't realize it just having a conversation, but when the when the rubber met the road and, and, and they had a need, they were real good at speaking to convince folk to give them on so that they could make it day by day. Maybe you've never had or been in contact with someone who is addicted to drugs. Yes. They can talk real good. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. When when their desire to have drugs was real high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they can turn and manipulate a person wow. in order to get what they wanted to get out of that person, only to benefit themselves. Uh -huh. Yeah. There, there are many others who have gifts and skills they take it and they manipulate others in order to get what they want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not not just in talking, but there are many who are able to do that just so they can survive day by day. I call that a get over spirit. Mm, yeah. There are many people, amen, mm. outside the world and even some inside the church yeah. who have a get over spirit. Yeah. All they want is what they want for that day in order to survive. Yeah. Never thinking that there's something beyond them just getting over day by day. Mm -hmm. You see, the truth is, the skills that a person has is given to them by God. Yeah. Yeah. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Yeah. Amen. And, and that skill is designed uh, and can be used to help someone um, to become self-sufficient and to live gay. That skill that God has blessed you with, good God Almighty, yeah. can be used to help a person live gainfully, I mean to live real well and live off of the gift. My God. Yeah. 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 So, so in other words, not be a scam artist. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but some people will position themselves to be involved uh, by playing the numbers. And when I say the numbers, I'm not talking about the numbers of gambling, right. which could be included, but I mean playing the numbers. So, so, so here's what they did. They sat him in front of the temple daily because they knew that there was a high traffic pattern of people coming in and out. So they're, they're playing the numbers because they know if enough people come by, they're waiting. Somebody's going to give something. Right, right. The more the people, the more the opportunity for someone to give to you. Yes. Okay. See, see, and even if, even if he gets turned down or you get turned down, you're not discouraged. <laughs> even if you reject it, you're not discouraged because you're playing the numbers game. Right. Because you got a whole bunch of people coming through mm -hmm. this high traffic area, mm -hmm. and and that's where a lot of people have positioned themselves. In high traffic areas, yeah. 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 to play the numbers game in order to get the alms that they that they need, uh, okay, yeah. to help them live day by day. Yeah. Because if the alms was all that great, you wouldn't have to go day by day. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. 
He don't only have to go every once in a while. Okay, let me let me move on. Let me move on. Yeah, yeah. This is what a lot of people end up doing because they feel like they can't be successful doing anything else. This is all that they know, and they settle on begging, and they settle on holding that cup, and they've settled on holding that position. And we haven't been allowed to enter, or they haven't allowed themselves to have entry into their heart, into their spirit, another thought or another belief that they can do something different or better. So because I'm being provided day by day, then I'll reject anything that tells me I can do better if I change my position. Do you want to do something better? Most of the time we reject the question. I need you to know the apostles didn't present a question to him. Let me move. Uh, so, so we tend to reject it. And, and what we tend to do is we, we reject the need and we embrace the want. We reject the need and we embrace the want. Not realizing that we can actually have them both. <laughs> not realizing that we can have them both. But in order to get both, we have to change our position. So most of us keep sitting exactly where we are. Big and all. As long as the person is giving us silver and gold, we have little to no motivation to change our position. We stay with the flow of high traffic and traffic patterns because we have confidence in the numbers and in the numbers game, which provide for us daily. So we end up uh, rejecting what we should reject. Um, and we just live life as it is and as it comes to us day by day. But somewhere along the line, we should want and desire to do something different. We should want and desire to have more than what we actually have. When we're in a position where we're just simply living day by day. Yes. I'm going to get to something here in just a moment. I really need you to listen carefully. Um, so what we do is we come to the same place daily. And we do the same thing daily. And we position ourselves in the same spot daily. Uh, just so we can make it daily. And you have no desire to change. Never realize that there is more to life than silver and gold. Mm -hmm. There is more to life than just having money in your cup. And before you know it, you sat there, and it's been three years. It's been five years. And you sat in that same position, now it's 10 years. 15 years now is 20 and over 20 years. You've been in that same position. And your mind has already told you this is all that you know how to do. You were trained real well by somebody. Yeah. This man, this man was... was well, in the text, he was born this way, uh, and somewhere along the way, maybe after he turned 18, maybe after he turned 20, I don't know when it was. Maybe when his mom and him said, look, uh, things get a little tight around the house. Maybe daddy couldn't work the way he used to to provide. But, but something happened along the way to where someone told this man how he could make it day by day. Yeah. 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 They said to him, look, you can, you can depend on other people in order to leave. Every day you can depend on somebody else in order for you to make it. Now I need to stop right here. Uh, and that is this, because we talk about, and I mentioned earlier that there are conditions uh, that may be self-induced that can bring a person to beg the arms. And there are conditions or situations that come up or circumstances that are completely out of one's control that allow them to be there. Uh, I'm about to address something here just briefly. That will be spiritually controversial. It will be controversial across um, across uh, political lines. Amen. But, but I'm going to simply use some text in the scripture. Amen. To point out the case. Because not everybody. Because even so, this man, we can look always on the negative. But when we look at this man, he, he didn't do anything wrong to be in that position. Right. Amen. He, he did not. And so I want to address a moment because... A lot of people have problems with people giving and giving on to those who don't have or who are less fortunate. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and so 
I, I want to give you a definition, if, if you don't mind. The definition is a definition of the word welfare. Okay. A welfare, uh, a procedure, a social or social effort designed to promote the basic physical and material well-being of people in need. Aid in the form of money or necessities for those in need. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. Something that's have and that's used to be distributed out for the aid and support of someone else. We, we know it as a method or a system we, today, we know it as a method or a system set up to help or assist the poor, the needy, the orphan, and, and the widow by providing resources as a stopgap until or while one gets in a better position to provide or do better for themselves and for their family. Mm. Welfare. Mm. And, and I need to throw this in there because welfare is not designed for a person to live off of forever. Amen. 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 I, 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 it is not designed for a person to live off of forever. Yeah. My God. Let, let me let me pause again for a moment here because I want to go somewhere because I, I'm not just speaking about what we see in text. I'm not speaking about what's set up in, in systems. I, I, I want to tell you about how these things can work for the, the benefit if the mindset is right. Yeah. So, so we grew up in, in, in time in our lives, in the phase of our lives, we were on welfare. Yeah. Oh my God. We, we, I understand what food stamps are. I understand what it means to go and get items and get things in in order to help provide food for the I understand that we were we were there, but but can I tell you that that though we were there, my mother's position was never to stay there. Amen. Say that. Say she that. used it what it was intended for as a stopgap. Yes. Say that. Until things got better. I'm going somewhere. Just hang on with me for a little bit. So, and the stop gap for things to get to get better. But the problem is that there are a lot of people who are abusing, mm. yeah, yeah. manipulating, oh, yeah. oh my God, what is intended to help the needy and the struggling and the orphan and the widow. Good God Almighty. Yeah. They're abusing it, saying, I'm just going to live off of it. In other words, they have their cup. Yeah. And on the front of their cup is called welfare. And they're shaking it in. Oh. And they're holding on to what they shouldn't when, when they have the ability and the skills, good God Almighty, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm yeah. saying, to rise up and walk and do something different. Yeah. Let me go to the scripture again. Let me go yeah. to the scripture because, because all that I've just said, people can say it's just my opinion, but, but it's not. Jesus, Jesus, well, let me first go here. There's a word that's in scripture that we very rarely talk about. That word is called gleaning. Gleaning, yeah. Gleaning. Yes, yes. Found in Leviticus 19, 19 through 10. I'll read that one. Leviticus chapter 23, Deuteronomy 24, and several other scriptures in, in, in Joshua and something in Isaiah and, and something in other scriptures, I believe in Micah, other scriptures regarding gleaning. Let me share with you what gleaning is. According to what God said in, in Deuteronomy chapter 19, also in Deuteronomy chapter 15, there's also something that he says. But, but listen, he, he says, uh, now when you reap the harvest of your land, God said, when I bring you into a blessed state and you reap the harvest of your land, which of course you did not plant. Right, right, right. The land that you didn't plant the stuff in, but you're going to receive, good God Almighty. Yeah. The, the good of that land, he said, you shall reap to the very corners of the field. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, you shall not reap to the very corners of the field. Nor shall you gather the gleanings of your harvest. Nor shall you glean your vineyard. Nor shall you gather the fallen fruit of your vineyard, ye shall leave them for the needy yeah, yeah. and for the stranger. Yeah, yeah. I am the Lord your God. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I said, I'm going to tell you, here is a, in scripture, and those that I quoted, you can debate all you want to, all the theologians, all you want to. Here is a system that God has established in order to take care of the needy, the poor, and those, even the aliens, those who were not in the Israelite community, though the aliens who came and joined in with them, to leave something behind for them. That's welfare. Yeah. 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 To leave some of what God has blessed you with, set up a system to provide for those who don't have. Yeah. Oh, you may not like it, but that's, that's there. Argue with all you want to. Listen, 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 look, listen, look, look what, 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 he, what he says in the New Testament. Because a lot of people will say, well, in the New Testament, no. The New Testament, Jesus said, uh, the poor you shall always have with you. Yeah. So God's heart doesn't change yeah. about dealing and taking care of people. Right. The problem is you got people who are abusing the system. Right, right, right. Call, call it who are abusing the system. The 
Apostle Paul said it like this, for Greer's key, because when it comes to gleaning, it still required you to still do some work. You had to go get it. That's right. They left the corner of the field and, and whatever fell out and whatever was at the bottom, they left it. But in order for it to get to your plate, you still had to go work and get it. In other words, there's a system that's in place that's designed to help, my God, help people to live and survive day by day. And the whole time, it's not just designed for them to have free food. They still had to go and work the field to gather the food. Good God Almighty. Not only they had to gather the food, but it done things for them. It made them feel good about themselves. It, it made them feel respectable. It, it made them feel like they're somebody. Even though God set a system up, God is trying to set a system up to provide so that people can do and become, but you still got to work. Yes. Now I understand what the Apostle Paul said, if a man don't work. Yeah. Oh, my God. Mm. It, it wasn't that that welfare is wrong. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't that welfare was wrong. It was that you have people who have settled on welfare mm. and, and decide to live off of it instead of use it as a stopgap. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, let me, yeah. let me move on off of, off of that. That would make, make somebody mad. So now we can understand why a person would beg arms. If we can understand why a person would be where they are standing. Not everybody should be judged the same way. Right. Good God Almighty. Not, not everyone should be put under the same umbrella as to why they're in the position that they're in. Mm -hmm. But the heart of those who say they are believers should have a heart to be a blessing to those who are with that. Yeah. That's Deuteronomy chapter 15. If you say they are your brother, then you should not be closing your hand up Good God Almighty. Yeah. to help them yeah. to survive. That, that, that's that's, that's, that's my so what has to happen is there has to be a change. A change of position. And the change of position starts with a change of mind, which means a change in heart. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if, in fact, we can begin to speak something or share something, change a man's way of thinking, to change a man's heart or what they feel about themselves or what they're able to do, that's when we begin to see a difference. In other words, we have to get them to understand that that there is a level of self-respect when you when you feel like you're able to provide for you and yours. Right. Yeah. Right. If you ever decide, woo, uh, if you ever decide to receive a word in your spirit that causes you to change your position by making you rise up, stand up, and walk. If you ever can grab hold of a word or something that will help you to reposition yourself. A word that challenges your very position that you've been in for 5, 10, 15, or 20 years. A word that will cause uh, your gift to be stirred up in you. Yes. If you can ever grab hold of a word, I'm telling you, your position can and will change. And you'll have a desire to change that word and that position. In other words, then you can really use your skills and your gift to stir up uh, and to begin to, to go after your own silver and gold. Can I say it again? Because then you'll be able to have more silver and gold than what you would ever have just standing on the corner bed yeah. or standing in front of the temple bed. Right. This is something that 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 John and uh, that that Peter and John saw in this man that there was opportunity that was there, Amen. But all the man had to do was now receive what he was about to hear. Right. All I'm trying to say is just receive what it is. That you're about to hear. Yeah. Amen. And you can begin to change the position that you are in or that you have been in, possibly for years and years and years. Yeah. All it yeah. takes now is for you to have an open spirit. And I realize we've been going to the same place day in and day out. And I realize we've been going through the same routine day in and day out. And we may have even settled in our own heart that there is no different than anything different that I could ever do except sit here and be a beggar. But I tell you, if you open up your heart yeah. to receive a word from God. I'm telling you, things will change. They can change in your life. Amen. Let, let, let me let me say it like this. Let me say it like this because because we need to realize that 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 we actually can live life in more than one position when we change our position. Yeah. Let me let me move on. See, see, because because when you do that, you have now the opportunity to 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 move and to flow through life and to be able to use your skills and gifts in more than just one area. Yes. 
and be able to utilize those skills and gifts in order to bring to bring uh, benefits and blessings into your own life. Amen. You can reestablish yourself when you are free to flow and to move about. You're no longer restricted. Yes. Constricted. You're, you're not, okay, uh, yes. so, so, so when you fly on the plane, and oftentimes you, when you first take off, they tell you to be, you got to have your seat trays up, seat backs up, upright, and your seat belts must be fastened. And then as you take off, go so far. And then when you hit, uh, get to a certain level, the plane will get to a certain height. When it gets to a certain height, it's not always completely level off, but only when it gets to a certain height, height, you will, you will, you will hear the the pilot come on. And the pilot will come on the board and, and come on board and it says, uh, you may now unbuckle your seatbelt. You're a ding sound. Mm -hmm. You may now unbuckle your seatbelt. You are now free to move about the cabin. <laughs> hmm. Mm -hmm. You are now free to move about the cabin. What am I saying? I, I'm simply saying this. When you hear that word, when you hear that thing, that ding, when it dings, in your spirit, when it moves your spirit, you, you know you are now free to move about life cabin. Yeah. You're no longer restricted to where you have been sitting. Oh, God, oh my God. You're, you're no longer restricted to being stuck where you are. You now have freedom to move about. And, and that's where a lot of us are failing in life. We we have been given an opportunity to be free and to move about and to, to feel good about who we are in life. Instead, we settle on just being locked in. Let's see. Now, I know every now and again there's going to be some What's it called? Turbulence. Turbulence along the way. And, and it'll dig again and it'll tell you to buckle up. That just means God wants you to sit still for a while. Yeah. 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 Because sooner or later you're going to hear a dig again and say, you're free to move about. Yeah. 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 It, it, you're, you're not restricted. He's just holding and keeping you in a safe spot. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. This man thought that in front of the temple all these years, it was a safe spot. But it wasn't a safe spot. It was a limited spot. Yeah. <laughs> Most of us have limited ourselves because we're selling on that spot. Yeah. And so we've decided that we'll hold on to what people are giving us. We've decided we'll hold on to what people hand out to us. We've decided we're going to hold on to what the government gives. We've decided that we're going to hold on to the welfare instead of saying, I'm going to do better. Yeah. It's not the welfare is bad. Don't let the devil tell you it is. Yeah. It's a good thing. Yes, it is. From God, I believe. Yeah. According to the scriptures, we read. But that means you have to settle that with your seatbelt locked in for the rest of your life. God intends for you to hear the ding in your spirit. Ding. Yeah. And hear the words you are now free to move about the cat. Good God Almighty. Yeah, there's some other things that you can do on the plane other than just sit in your seat. Let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. In other words, we need to be ready to stand up and walk. Amen. The truth is we can live life and have it more abundant. Instead of us, a lot of us depending on where we are constantly are, we need to be able to stand up and walk. We think the silver and gold is what we need, but we actually need to stand up and walk. Yeah. We can accomplish a whole lot more when we stand up and walk. We can receive a whole lot more when we stand up and walk. And if you can stand up and walk, that means that you can earn your silver and gold. And you, again, you can do a whole lot more than just earn silver and gold. Let me tell you, you can earn your self-respect. You can earn self-efficiency. Yeah. You can earn and build your self-worth. Yeah. You can build your self-love. Yeah. Amen. And you can build up your self-dignity. Yeah. Now, some of us need to let go of the beggar's cup. Yeah. Oh, let me say it like it is. Some of us need to let go of the beggar's cup. Yeah. Inside the beggar's cup is self-pity, mm -hmm. self-righteousness, and selfishness. Yeah. Amen. Inside the beggar's cup is get over spirit. Yeah. Inside the beggar's cup is no love for anybody else. Right. Inside the beggar's cup is I'm going to get all I can get. Inside the beggar's cup is not concerned about anybody else except me. The only people I care about are the ones who pick me up and take me to my spot every day. Pick me up and take me back home. I'm only concerned about them because they want a piece of the cup. That's how he knew to go there. Somebody was saying, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Listen, and I'm done with this. We have to let go of the cup and rise up and walk. So as they walked up to this man, this man was had his cup out and he said, beg on to them. He looked at them, and, but he said he looked at them and then they came back and said, look at us. 
Because there was something that he really needed to see he had been missing. He'd been looking at other folk the same way, but he was missing something. So now that Peter and John said, look at us, and we want you to know that that what you were asking us for, we don't have to give you. The money you're asking for, I don't have to give you. Good God Almighty. The things you're begging for, I don't have to give you. Listen, you want money, I don't have it to give you. You want silver and gold, we don't have it to give you, but such we do have. We're more than willing to give you because what we can give you is more than the silver and gold. What we can give you will help you make the silver and the gold. Yeah, we, we, in other words, it's no longer taking the easy, comfortable road and still living uncomfortably. Now it's time to change what road you're traveling down and deal with whatever comes your way because now you have the ability to deal with whatever comes your way. So silver and gold, I don't have for you. But just as I have, I give you. And I give you the word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So what we need to do when we walk and we head into situation, or if we're the ones who are standing in need of a position change, we need to stand on what we can give someone else. Mm. Or we need to open up our hearts on what we can receive from someone else as it relates to the Word of God. Mm. The Word of God says these few scriptures, and I promise I'll be done. The Word of God says, I will supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. Mm. Then you tell someone, stand up and walk. Mm. Yeah, he said, you are more than a conqueror to him who loves you. Stand up and walk. You need to tell him, greater uh, is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Stand up and walk. You need to share a word that says, uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Stand up and walk. Wait a minute, let me finish it with this one. Now unto him, that's what you tell him, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according, listen, to the power that worketh in us. Stand up and walk. I realize we may be struggling. You may have been in a position for a long time, but it does not mean you have to stay in that position. Know. You know you've been there, you've gotten comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm. The day and the time is up for you to continue living that way. It's time to, to get comfortable doing what you enjoy doing. Mm. Yes, Lord. It's time for you to get comfortable doing what God has blessed you to do. Yeah. It's time for us to start being who God has called us to be, and we cannot do it with a beggar's cup in our hand. Mm. Oh, so I say to you today, name of Jesus Christ. Stand up and walk. Yeah. You have it in you. The Bible says it immediately his own was strengthened in his ankles. Something took place immediately in him. They grabbed him, said look upon us, pulled him up. And when they pulled him up, mm. good God Almighty, listen to this, when they pulled him up, his ankle got strengthened, he jumped around, leaping and praising God, and went into the temple with them, leaping and praising God. <laughs> the thought just hit me. Come on now. Do not be caught up mm. in the words or pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Mm. 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 The truth is, is, we all need somebody mm. to help us up. We just need to pray and believe that it's somebody who's in God. Yes. Uh, don't buy into the lie. Yeah. Pull your own self up. Sometimes you can't pull yourself up when you cripple. Right. Come on now. Right. There are some situations in life that have crippled you, that have crippled us. Amen. And we need some help. Yeah. We need a, a helping hand from a godly man, from a godly woman. Yeah. Well, take the time and say, just look at me and, and, yeah. and let me share something with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me stick out my hand and, and, and let me use the every very strength that I have in me, whatever it may be, to lift up that weight. Oh my God. Mm. And, 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 and understand what we're looking at now. We're talking dead weight. Let me help lift up that weight. The man was sitting on the, the ground, lift up the dead and snatch and pull him up. I need somebody who's got strength who will be willing to reach down and give their all to help pull me up. So that I can stand on my own. So that I can rise up and walk. That was the time of my life. This is an invitation. It's an invitation to get to know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. But listen, that was the time of my life when, when uh, I became mentally 
Quick, uh, let me explain that. You see, there was a, a time when I, I, I was in need. I haven't shared this story with a lot of people, but I'll share it with you. Because I believe it, I hope it'll help. And I was about 20, 21. And my transmission went out of my car. I was working, but I didn't have the money to get it fixed. And I went to my dad on Monday night. The NCAA championship game was on. And I believe at that time, I could be wrong, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. But anyway. It was a Monday night, the NCAA championship game was on. I went to him that night and I asked him, I said, listen, I, I need to borrow, I think it was $250 to get my transmission fixed on my car. And he paused for a second and he said to me, well, I have some things I need to do. I said, well, all I need is just a little help. I'll pay you back in, in a couple of weeks as soon as I get well. You know, I, I don't know if I got need to see what I got. I have, my dogs are, got a dog that's locked up in the pen, in the pound. I got to see if I can get them out. And uh, some other things. And when I heard those words, it pierced me so much. And I didn't realize it, but I instantly became mentally crippled. Mm -hmm. I became crippled because as I left, Angry, heartbroken, mad, whatever you want to call it, I was that. Because the last word I said to him was, uh, a dog, huh? Okay. And I left. Because all I heard was, his dog was more valuable than me. Having his dog was more valuable than helping me out in this situation. That, that's what I heard. So I became crippled. I became crippled to the fact that I would need any help the rest of my life. I got some witnesses in here. I told them I'll never ask him or anybody else for anything again. I'll do it myself. I'll get it on my own. Whatever way it is, I'll get it on my own. I, I, didn't, I didn't embrace a, a crooked or a, 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 a get over mentality, but I became hard hearted. I was crippled. To the point was that's fine because I don't need him either. Then I, then I, win. I don't need him either. Future father love because we weren't married at the time. Maybe I wasn't married at the time, but great respect for for him. After several weeks, he asked. He had heard about kind of what took place and. Yes, have you talked to your dad? I said, nope. Another week go by. Hey, you talked to your dad? Nope. Because I would visit him every Sunday night. Have you talked to your dad? Nope. Now I'm talking to him? Nope. Finally, he, after about six or seven weeks, he pulled me to the side. He told me to sit down. He said, You upset because he didn't? I guess I'm upset because of that. And I had all my reasons as to why. And he turned and he focused in on one thing. He said to me, I, he called me boy then. He said, boy, let me tell you something. He said, I don't care how old you get and where you want in life. You're going to always need somebody to help you. He, see, he saw where I was in my crippled state. Yeah. 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 And when he said that, I, I was still kicking against him. He said, you always need somebody. So for you to hold that over him, it's only going to hurt you worse. I was still angry and upset. But I heard what he said. And I realized I had to change some things within. So that next week, I went over to my dad's house and, and uh, knocked on the door. 
And I didn't get an answer. I left. I came back the next week on a Sunday night. Knocked on the door and I didn't get an answer. No, let me change. I'm sorry. I went back there one week, knocked on the door, and he asked. And he called me old man. He looked at me and he said, Old man, I thought you had died and fell off the face of the earth. I simply said, No, I was going through some things. I noticed that his voice was different. He spoke like more like oh, a young man. I thought you fell off the face of the earth. When he normally spoke more like this. We chatted, talked a little bit about some things. I went back the next week, knocked on the door, dig it out. And I went back the next week and knocked on the door, dig it out. And I went back the next week and I realized his truck wasn't there. And I'm like, he's always here on why where is he? But I remember where uh, his his wife lived. Because I had to go and do some work. Because I needed some money one time. He made me work for it. Y'all didn't hear that, did you? Yeah. All right. And so I went over there and I pulled up and I saw his pickup truck sitting all the ways. And I, I went and I knocked on the door and I, I asked for him. And some young youngster who was younger than me looked at me and, and looked at me funny. And I told him who I was and what I was looking for. And he looked at me and backed up and looked. And, and I could hear the wife's voice asking, who is that? And so I, I mentioned my name to him. And she said, oh yeah, thank you, come on in. And so when I stepped in, I said, hey, I'm looking for, looking for him, and, and, and I see his pickup out here, and she says, oh baby, I'm sorry to tell you, we laid him to rest. We buried him on yesterday. Sorry, we didn't have a way to contact you. And, and no fault of that, he kept it separate. It, it, it. But do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that, that if things don't change, if we don't receive the word, yeah. We don't realize how well we can. Do you realize how long I could have been crippled? Yeah. Number one. Do you also realize how devastating it could have been had I not had the opportunity to see him that one last time? Yeah. Yeah. The words you speak into somebody's life can change their position. Yes. Yes. See, it's not all about a physical crippling or a, 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 a physical disorder. Or, but sometimes it can be a, an emotional crippling, a mental crippling that, that God has given you a word to say, look upon me. Sit down, boy. Let me talk to you for a second. Look at me while I talk to you. I changed my whole perspective on, on giving, on doing, grudges. I don't have time for all that stuff. I don't have time for it. Life is too precious. Yep. And we have an opportunity to miss out on too many things because we're angry and upset because something to go our way X amount of days or years ago. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help you. Listen, you don't really come into terms of this until you really know Jesus. Yes, Lord. For yourself. Get to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. So that when a word is spoken to you, it penetrates your heart. It quickens you and it starts to change your position. Yes, Lord. You can begin to think different and live differently. I don't have any regrets. Except that maybe I waited so long before going back. But I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to one more time to sit down and hear him call me old man. Rise up and walk. When that word is just rise up and walk. You, you can be better. You can do. You can do better. It's not all about money. Tell me. It's not all about silver and gold. It is not. It is about having life and living life and that more abundant. Yes. Don't hinder yourself because you want to stay good. Dare to do something different. Dare to be different. Dare to live the dream that you really desire. Yes. God has gifted you in it. And what he hasn't gifted you with, he's gifted somebody else with. Amen. And believe me, they'll come along your way. And they'll extend their hand. Mm. Yes, and God. encourage you to rise up. Yeah, yeah. And walk. God, we thank you for your word. We pray nothing has been said or done against your word. Father, we pray, oh God, that our hearts 
are and have been conditioned to receive the word of God. God, that we'll be encouraged to be better, to live better, to rejoice, to have a joyful life. We pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that those things that are crippling us and have crippled us, oh God, that, that we can come above it or rise above it in the name of Jesus. That we can rise up and walk. That we can walk in our victory. That we can walk in success. That we can walk in joy. That we can walk in peace. God, that we can walk in abundance. That we can walk in financial freedom. In the name of Jesus, oh God, stir up the gifts within us, oh God, that we may rise up and walk. Father, we honor you and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning at Straight Road Christian Church. Join us again next Sunday at Facebook Live at 10 a.m. Follow us on Facebook and share this broadcast with others. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on the message God wants to bring through this church. You have an opportunity to be a blessing to this ministry. Visit our website at straightwaychurch.org and click Give. Or make a donation using the Tithely app on your phone. That, the app is T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. We also offer curbside pickup service for members between 12 and 2 on Sunday afternoons. Your gift helps us continue to serve this community and God's kingdom and is greatly appreciated. Thank you again for tuning in to today's broadcast and for being part of our family.